Hey, this is a video for 8.9, Solid Waste Disposal. So go ahead and check out the overview and set up your guided notes. Now we, we call our waste, um, our trash, it's called municipal solid waste. Uh, most of our trash, or municipal solid waste, MSW, write it down, um, is, most of it is, you know, organic. We have paper, yard trimmings, food waste, those are top three. We also have plastics up there as well. Um, just remember, plastics came originally from fossil fuels that originally came from petroleum. Um, and we'll talk about the recycling of those in a bit. Um, but you don't really have to know all of the breakdowns. You should just know that paper has the most. We also got a lot of yard trimmings and food waste. Now, the waste stream is what happens to it once it becomes trash. So... Somebody will come and pick it up. Uh, some of it will be sent to a landfill, or a lot of it will be sent to a landfill, you'll see in a second. Some will be recycled, and some will be sent away for incineration. And incineration just means that it is being burned for energy, much like you would burn coal, um, you know, to boil water, make steam, turn, you know, turn a turbine, power a generator. Um, Problem is, when you do this with solid waste, you don't know exactly what's in there. I mean, you'd have to sort everything. Um, so if you're just going to mass burn a lot of your trash, you could release a lot of pollutants into the atmosphere. So of our waste stream, <clears throat> uh, more than half of it, or about half of it goes to landfills. About a quarter of it goes for recycling. 10% about goes for composting. Um, and the rest is incineration. And incineration is to generate some electricity or energy recovery from this material. Now, in the recycling, there is single stream recycling and multi stream recycling or dual stream. Now, single stream recycling is where you just throw all of your recyclables into one container. Now, that is, you know, that's easy from the consumer's uh, aspect. Um, but the problem is, uh, if you, when you throw out your cardboard with, you know, your, your old milk container or, you know, your, your yogurt container, you know, your cardboard might not be as good to use. It might not be as recyclable as if it were only collected with other paper products. Uh, once it gets, uh, you know, food and a lot of grease on it, it may diminish the ability for it to be recycled. Multi-stream recycling is when you separate your recyclables. You have your uh, your paper and your plastics and your metals and your glass all separated. Uh, sometimes it'll just be paper and then everything else. Sometimes it's every one separate. Now, there are benefits and drawbacks to each. Um, for multi-stream, it's a lot less convenient from a consumer perspective. So we're a bunch of lazy Americans. We'll probably just throw it all in the trash and it will end up in a landfill. Um, if we got to go through all these different things and like this one has to be separated from this one and this one and you're not getting a ticket for just throwing it in the trash. That's what a lot of people do. Now, single stream recycling, the materials can be downgraded. Like you, you might not get as good a quality of plastic, good quality of paper and multi stream recycling. If you have a mistake, it can be very expensive. Now, um, yeah, I don't really have an answer. We could probably do something in class where we investigated this, but, uh, I'm sure there are research and, you know, conflicting reports about which one is better, but they both have their benefits. Now, e-waste is a major problem, um, and the planned obsolescence of a lot of items, especially when it comes to smartphones, like smartphones, uh, gaming com consoles, like TVs even, like they come out with bigger and better ones every few years, sometimes new phones every year, at least the iPhone is every year. Um, the problem with that is that there is, you know, metals that are present in there. Um, there's actually gold that goes into the, uh, the computer parts. Uh, there's gold that goes into the, like, that's, that goes into like the motherboard and the other equipment, the hardware. And, Gold is very expensive, but there's also other heavy metals like cadmium, mercury, and lead that can be found in the batteries. And if that gets into, uh, it is endocrine disruptors in humans and animals, if it gets into the waterway, it can be very toxic. 
Now we dispose of our when we dispose of uh, our items, we would throw it into a sanitary landfill. And a sanitary landfill is just a landfill. They call it sanitary landfill because it is steps are being taken to prevent uh, leaking into the aquifers. Now the first thing you know which particles are uh, allow less or are less permeable but we have clay layer one and a clay layer two so two layers of clay and there will probably be a lining in the middle you know if, you know if, whether it's plastic or clay or some some uh, device that will prevent more uh, any of this liquid leachate to come out. Now leachate is the liquid that will accumulate and a lot of it is very toxic. We do not want this leachate getting into our aquifers. That's why we will line our landfills with this. The clay is going to take, you know, if there is leachate and it's, you know, the clay, it's going to take a couple hundred years for it to get through. Um, and a lot of times the leachate will be pumped up by a factory that is going to collect it in an area and then they can dispose of it on land um, or by treating it further. Now the other thing is you can generate methane because there is going to be anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration, also known as decomposition or a form of decomposition, uh, whenever there is decomposition or respiration in the absence of oxygen, methane is released as a byproduct. So that methane will need to be collected. It can be used as a source of fuel. So the sanitary landfill, it's okay to put um, food wrappers and cardboard in there because if they're contaminated with food, they're not going to be recyclable. Um, rubber products can go in there. Um, it's uh, Any glass that is difficult to recycle could also go into a landfill. Things that should not are toxic and hazardous waste like auto fluid, any petroleum, any, any oil, any antifreeze, electronics and the appliances because their electronic component components may contain heavy metals. Other things, you should not put compostables in there. If you have a cardboard box that is covered with, um, that is covered with uh, pizza, it could be composted. Okay, uh, if it's a food wrapper and it's like a plastic wrapper in New York, we don't recycle those. Some places they can recycle them. I don't know how, but they can. Um, you can also take rubber in to like have it repurposed as well. It can go into the, uh, the base lining of a playground or um, different play areas. Now there's some issues with sanitary landfills. For one, NIMBY, not in my backyard. You know, it might stink, it might be rats. Uh, people might not want to invest in properties around there. It might cause people to lose money. Uh, there's also costs of construction. The potential is there for a contamination of the leachate, and that is a major thing that, uh, that the landfill, uh, the people that manage the landfill will have to uh, constantly monitor. There may be gas emissions if it's not done properly. You could have methane escaping. Methane is 25 times more uh, has more warming potential than carbon dioxide. Uh, methane and carbon dioxide can both be emitted. And it is really poor decomposition. Things are not breaking down. Plastic is going to take hundreds or thousands of years to break down. Regular food items, even just like a cardboard box, is going to take a long time to break down because there is no oxygen. Now, waste to energy is something different. Waste to energy is when you take the waste and you incinerate it to generate electricity, much like you would burn coal to boil water to generate steam. Well, this you're burning trash. Some benefits, it is a 90% reduction in waste. It can be used to generate electricity. You're getting trash to heat, to steam, the turbine, electricity. Your drawbacks are you will generate a lot of ash, and they need to be tested for toxins. Uh, there could be plastics and metals in there. And there's also a lot of the NIMBY concerns. People do not want to have um, a place where they're burning trash in their backyard. It can also release carbon dioxide and, and nitrous oxide. Uh, and it can concentrate the waste products. Now, when we throw away our plastics, they can eventually make it into the waterways. And you probably or maybe heard about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Well, we have currents in the Pacific Ocean that kind of go like this. And we get once you get plastic 
ever seen like water that is moving around in a river part of a river might get slow and then you just see everything just kind of pooling there well you have an area in the western and the eastern pacific ocean that has a giant it's a giant area where they've collected where just a bunch of plastic collects that's because of poor circulation in those areas um at least i know one of the pacific garbage patches is twice the size of texas um, which is a really giant space. You don't really have to know how big it is. Um, but it is a major concern when we have, like, I've read certain places that there's more plastic in the ocean than um, fish. Uh, and that isn't, I don't know if that's 100% true, but uh, there is a huge percentage of fish have microplastics in them because when plastics are degraded, they will break down into smaller and smaller pieces and they have found micro uh, microplastics. Um, they even found a beer bottle recently in the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Okay, or Mariana Trench, which is way down over here. Anyway, what I would like you to do is respond to this check for understanding. And for FRQ practice, I want you to describe a human impact of sanitary landfill operation in an urban area. I hope that this video is informative. I thank you for your attention and I will see you soon.